Hello everyone, Physics here. Welcome to another tutorial. In this one, we will be covering the usage of the AGM-88 High Speed Anti-Radiation Missile, or HARM, in the HARM as Sensor Mode, or HAS. This mode is very useful if either the variant of F-16 isn't compatible with the AN-ASQ-213 pod, or the pod isn't available to you on your mission. With this mode, you can still achieve good results against enemy air defenses. This tutorial is not intended to be an extensive explanation about this weapon and its associated system, but I believe that if you follow this tutorial, you will be able to use this weapon effectively. Let's get into it. Preparation One thing that you should do with the 2D map prior to any mission in BMS, not just if you're doing suppression or destruction of enemy air defenses, CAD or DAD, is to mark the possible known threats that are on or near your flight path and your target. These will then show as threat circles in the HSD page, which will be a tremendous help with your situational awareness. For this mission, we have information that there are two known threats around the target area, an SA-2 to the north and an SA-3 to the southwest of it. You can find the types of vehicles and threats within a unit on the 2D map by right-clicking on that unit and then clicking on Status. This will show a variety of information, but the information we're looking for in this case is the air defense type described here. We can see that it's an SA-2. If we do the same process on the other unit, we will see that it's an SA-3. Keep in mind that while these are air defense units, they might not be the only threat to you. Other unit types like armored, mechanized, and infantry units have their own air defense assets, sometimes very dangerous ones, like SA-15s, SA-19 Tunguskas, SA-13s, Shilkas, as well as different types of man pads and other AAA units. So I encourage you to check all the units that might be relevant to your mission and mark the ones that may constitute a threat. You can mark a threat by right-clicking on an empty area on the 2D map and then clicking on Set Pre-Planned Steer Point. The first one will be Steer Point 56, which you can also use in the aircraft if you wish to reference the position of this threat. Click it once, pick the air defense unit from the drop-down list, click on accept, close this window, and then drag the symbol to place it over the threat in question. Repeat the process for all the threats you wish to mark. If you wish to delete one of these markings, maybe you made a mistake, right click on it and then click on delete. Once you are done with marking threats, go to data cartridge and click on save. On the data cartridge in the harm tab, we can set the threat codes for all the enemy air defenses we wish the harm to scan in has mode. This can also be changed in the aircraft, and I will cover this a little later, as I think it will make more sense. Setup inside the aircraft. Once you're in the aircraft, the harms have to be powered on prior to being used. Go to air to ground mode. As usual, I recommend powering the weapons on while on the ground. Their power won't run out, and they will be ready to be used when needed. This can be done in the air as well, as the time it takes them to be powered on, run their built-in test and be ready is very quick, about 10 seconds. Additionally, on the HARMS SMS page, we can see the following in a clockwise manner. The first OSB is the mode you're in, in the ground mode. On the next OSB, we can step between the tertiary tables, starting on table one, two, three, zero, back to one. Tertiary targets corresponding to the selected table will be loaded at handoff. If table zero is selected, no tertiary target will be loaded. These tables will be referenced a little later. 
The next OSB is the cycle between the different air to ground munitions if there are different air to ground munitions loaded in the aircraft. After that we have the power on power off OSB. The following OSB is the bit or built in test. If you wish to run the bit again, press this OSB. You can select the active station by pressing these two OSBs or respectively station 3 and station 7. The SAF on the bottom means that master arm is set to safe. If master arm is set to sim, sim will be displayed on here. If master arm is set to arm and power is on, a ready will be displayed on here. The following two OSBs, command destruction and burst height, aren't currently implemented. Now go to the weapon page on one of your MFDs. On the weapon page, select HAS or Harm As Sensor. This display will show the following information in a clockwise manner. The first OSB allows us to go back and select the mode we wish. On the next OSB, we can step through the different threat tables. Table 1, 2, and 3. Back to 1. You can also quickly cycle through the tables by pressing TMS left on your stick. After that, we have the Has Field of View, or FOV. It is currently in wide, which is an all direction and long range scan, a center, which is front only with half the wide's range, left only, right only, back to wide. These options act as a zoom and therefore allow you to declutter close contacts. The next OSB is the search filter. This allows you to specify which threat types you want the missile to scan for on this table. Press the respective OSBs to select or deselect the threat types you want the missile to scan for. In this case, I will only leave highlighted the SA2 and SA3. The next OSB is the upfront controls. If you press this OSB, you are able to configure which threats are in each table by using the ICP and the DED. For example, in this table, we currently have SA2, SA3, SA4, SA5 and SA10 tracking radars. However, if I want to replace one of these with, for example, an SA6 tracking radar, I can use the rocker to move to the line I wish to replace and input 206, which is the code for this tracking radar. You can find the codes on page 419 on the F-16 BMS manual. I recommend making a copy of this table and have it handy if needed. I will also leave a link to an image in the description of this video for the same table. Back at the weapon page, I can now go to the search filter and enable SA6. The next OSB, labeled RS, is the reset cycle time. This will reset the timer at which the next scan will be complete and revert the scan cycle counter back to 1. The scan cycle timer will depend on how many threat types the harm is scanning for. This can be as quick as 4 seconds if the harm is only scanning for one threat or as long as 30 seconds if the harm is scanning for 5 different threats. It is only at the end of each scan cycle that the threats will be presented to you on the display. So when possible, try to narrow down the threat types you're looking for. The next OSB is for Geographic Specificity or GS options. This allows you to restrict the harm seeker within a geographic region defined by a circle centered around the target. 
in GSDE or GSMP, the diameter of the area restricted is dependent on the distance at launch. The biggest distance at launch, the bigger the restricted area. The difference between GSDE and GSMP is not currently implemented. After that, we have Target Isolate or TI. Target Isolate options allows the pilot to command the harm to attack only the designated threat type and to control the flex and glide characteristics of the missile. Flex means that the harm will start searching for alternate threat emitters. A harm will flex when it has reached the range at which it should have acquired the primary threat type but has not yet acquired it. With nothing highlighted and TI being displayed, the missile will glide and flex. If TI is highlighted, the missile will glide but not flex. If NC is highlighted, the missile will enter a loss of track glide mode. This is when the missile loses the emitter during the flight. It will glide waiting for the threat to come online again while maximizing time of flight. If SD is selected, the missile will neither glide nor flex. Finally, along the left hand side, we have the threat types the missile is currently scanning for. Deploying the weapon. Once you're near the threat area, go to air ground mode. I recommend having one MFD on the HSD page so you can see the threat circles you entered on the 2D map for extra situational awareness. Set up your other MFD on the weapon page and then select has. Make sure that the weapon page is center of interest or soy by pressing DMS aft if the weapon page is not soy. Continue flying the aircraft in the direction of the threat until it starts emitting. In this case, the SA-3 should set me outside of the weapon's field of view, so I never pick up. Once the HAS picks up the threat, use the radar cursor to move the cursor over the threat, TMS up the designated, and then shoot the harm. Keep in mind that the harm is a fire and forget weapon, so do any evasive maneuvers as needed. Counter. 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 Due to its limited field of view and refresh time between scans, it can still be effective. Keep in mind that the harm is mostly reliant on radar emissions, so if the threat stops emitting and never restarts, the harm has the likelihood of missing the intended target. Also, the harm packs a relatively small warhead, so a near miss might not be enough to take out the target. I hope this tutorial was helpful, thank you for watching, and I will see you on the next one.